day 21 of my challenge, I'm trying to reach the rating of 2,000 in chess within 30 days. And today, some of my opponents are really, really generous. But then, I get in big, big trouble. First game, everybody. We have the black pieces. We play against d4. We play knight out. The idea is that we are controlling the center and we are avoiding the opponent to go with the spawn. Now they go with c4. I test them with the move c5. This could be the start of the Benoni or of the Benko. Honestly, I don't play the Benko Gambit since so long time. Uh, but it's an opening that I used to play when I was at this level. And the idea is that you're sacrificing so many pawns in order to get compensation. Because you want to have, you want to place one day the rooks on this file. Now, I don't remember if I have to play g6. I will play g6. So I have to play g6, bishop here, d6, castle. And then you develop this knight. You go with the queen on b6 or an e5. You bring the rook here and you try to exploit this point. Now we go with the bishop there. This bishop g5 is not such a good move. You don't want to give away that bishop usually. Uh, because now this bishop is basically uncontested. It's the only like monster there on that diagonal okay e3 we could stay there and say to our opponent you are no longer going to castle so we do it and we show them the difference <laughs> by castle okay so now we play i mean we could play the move queen here directly but let's play this not let's not rush wow what's this move they want to go for h5 i mean i'm not too scared not gonna lie but I don't want to, them, to give them counterplay, so I play just the move h5. So I'm stopping this pawn, and now this rook has to stay there for their entire life to protect this poor pawn on h4 that was pushed without a real purpose. <laughs> okay, now I'm a bit sassy today. So I want to go with the queen here and attack this uh, little pony. And then I have to develop all my pieces. This is a gambit where... I have to put the microphone a bit closer, I thought you could hear everything. Uh, up to this point uh by the way uh this gambit is one of those where you don't just crash your opponent immediately if they go wrong it's like more a strategical gambit you have long-term compensation we develop the knight and we will bring the queen here or there oh my cheese macaroni this is an example of a bad sacrifice because after taking here with what piece with which pieces is my opponent attacking exactly i will go back there i'm a little bit scared but my next move is going to be knight of six and then the queen has to go back homey forever and ever yeah rook there is a genius move now i play knight here attacking the queen yeah the queen goes back that's a good a very good sign uh, we go with the queen here to the attack. We are threatening this check. We're also threatening uh, to take this pony. Why am I calling pony both knights and pawns? This might be very confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think pawn pushes is a very good move because they are threatening to push even forward. And oh my god. But they have a problem, a very urgent one. They need to deal with, with the threat here. So I will play this move. I have a very clear idea in my mind. I want to trade the queens. If I trade the queens, I should be winning this. If I don't trade the queens, I'm under pressure, right? So I now play queen here. I'm a bit chicken, chickening. Is this a new verb? So chickening means being scared. So I'm a bit chickening around. And this is because, guys, when I was in the chess club, I was a little girl. Uh, there was like this instructor, which didn't know too much about how to... Um, you know, our psychology works. And basically, every time you lost the game, it was saying, Sei un pollo. That means you are a chicken. So, in my mind, a chicken is somebody that is bad at chess and is usually scared because then you are scared of this instructor. So, it was like, not, it's not, not a, good, <laughs> a good memory there. Okay, I think we. Ooh! Okay, I was thinking about taking because after Rook takes. I lose a piece. Okay, uh, let's take there. <laughs> now my opponent has to take there, and now we can take here. And if pawn pushes, we can simply take, so it shouldn't be a big deal. And now the nice part is that my opponent has actually full material compensation for the piece, meaning that he has three pawns for a piece, but that's not enough compensation. If I could turn on the evaluation, I cannot do it. Uh, this would be like advantage for black. And the point is that all the pawns, Sorry. <laughs> All the pawns 
are disconnected. This pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, those pawns are also weak. So the only thing that I have to do is avoid getting checkmated and then to bring the rooks to attack some pawns, win some pawns, and then I will eventually win the game. You know what would, could be my critical pawn? This one. Because once I take those or those, I mean, I just get rid of those pawns, uh, this could be pushed and can make me win the game. Rook there makes sense, but the rook is not attacking much. There is no threat to go here, no here. I mean, all my all my pieces are controlling very well, so we go just with the rook there attacking. This is like the main reason of the Benko. So you're opening up the A and B file in order to have two rooks that are so annoying. Because together with this bishop, this is very annoying, because now this knight is hanging. So I have already some tactics uh, around. Um, for example, I could just move this knight away. Oh, let's move the knight here. Yes, and now I'm attacking this. I was just checking that I'm not in trouble here, but after rook takes, I can simply take pawn takes, I take uh, with the king, so no problem. And this knight is under attack, and if my opponent moves away, this pawn is hanging with check. If my opponent protects it, I can simply give away my bishop for a good purpose, because I'm taking a pawn and then this one is also hanging, uh, so it would be like a very good position. Oh, they just play rook there? Uh, but this is a free piece. After this, there is absolutely nothing, my friend. I mean, you can go here, but I take, and if you take with the rook, I take there. And if you take with the pawn, you're not even threatening to promote. So, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a good deal. Okay, we take here, we give a check, the king will move. Uh, I'm thinking if I should even take this pawn. I can't take that pawn. Yeah, we'll just take everything. <laughs> I hope not to end up in big trouble, but it should be all right. Yeah, because this bishop is protecting super well. So after this, I take, rook takes, I take the pawn. And if the pawn takes, I just have to stop this from... <gasps> is this a genius move? No, no, there is no threat. <laughs> okay, I will play rook here attacking this pawn. Oh, I'm starting to be nervous, guys. Yeah, I just don't have to take the pawn. Just don't don't touch it. Okay, this is the game that makes me win. I sacrifice the rook just for a little second because after take, 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 I take this rook here. And that's GG's. <laughs> okay, we have it. Um, and there we go. New game. We have again the black pieces. Oh, wait, this game could bring us to 1700. E4, E5. I like it. Night out, night out. When my opponent play the Italian or the Spanish or the Scotch. Okay, they go with the Italian. Now I play this. I'm allowing the fried liver. I will show you how to deal with the fried liver. I mean, in many. Um, like at the beginning, main instructor tell to just avoid the fried leader by playing the move bishop c5. Here you can do that. Just play this, and this move is not possible because you do numi numi and you take the knight. But here I'll show you how to deal with it. First of all, you play the move d5. You are facing this bishop, and now do not dare to take there. You play knight here, attacking the bishop. You sacrifice a pawn, but just for a bit. Ooh. So the opponent went back there, and this is already very wrong, because you want, to you want to give a check there. Now I can simply take, pawn takes, and I take here. I took back the pawn, the knight has to go back, um, doesn't want to go back, but we'll have to go back. I'll force you to go back! <laughs> and on the knight, I'm a bit crazy to that. So, oh, 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 oh. Okay, I cannot take there because the rook is hanging, so I have to defend this checkmate, and I will do it. I will do it by playing queen f6. So I'm protecting the checkmate there, but there's a little bit of a risk here. Yeah, for example, this move can be played. And now, where do I place my queen? I mean, I can simply go here. There is no threat, right? Oh, this pawn was hanging. Oh my shoot. We just try the queens be friendly with each other. I have the bishop here and I'm happy with my... Uh... What? <laughs> Did they just <laughs> blunder the queen? <laughs> okay, guys. You can all be 1700. Like this guy. They also blunder the queen. You can do it. Let's game. I play e4, e5. 
Let's play Night Out, attacking this little pawn. And we play, let's play the Italian game. Let's do for this. So, what's the idea? So, my opponent is now not developing this bishop. I don't like this move d6 because it's a little bit passive. Now, this bishop is inside the box, is blocked. I'm not a big fan. Okay, I will play c3 and d4. This is the main idea of the Italian. You want to go with the pawn in the center. And the, the point is that after pawn takes, you want to take back with the pawn. So, you have two strong pawns in the center of the board. I can't say the other word. Uh, okay, so there is this pawn under attack, right? Maybe I should have castled first. Okay, I will play knight here to protect this pawn. Uh, it's fine, it's good. Because after pawn takes, I can simply take this pawn is well protected. Now we also castle. Uh, also, it's good that after this move, uh, we shouldn't have problems because of the pin, because this knight is also protecting. All right, let's play h3. We're just asking a question. Did I lose a pawn? Oh, no. Okay, they went back. <laughs> they could have taken, because if I take with the knight, this pawn is hanging. If I take with the queen, this pawn is then not protected twice. So they, they had to do for it. They had to go for it. That's why, guys, I did a mistake. I went too early for the move d4. I just had to first castle. Just first castle and then play the move d4. Because after knight of six, I would have the move rook e1 directly, like I have it right now, that I can protect with the rook, and this is very natural. Now, I will have to show you a very important plan in the Italian, and all in all the structure with the pawn on e45. You bring this knight all the way to g3, it's like a very nice knight maneuver. If your knight is here on c3, you can think about doing that by playing knight e2 and knight g3. And the knight on g3 is just... Uh, the g3 square is just a starting point because the knight can forward can go forward on f5 where it's attacking a very critical point upon on g7 this is usually very annoying and your opponent needs to avoid now this b6 is a move without any single purpose so we just keep going with our plan and we don't have to worry about such moves wow knight back all the way i will go for a sacrifice guys i'll play the move b4 what's the idea the idea is that my queen could slide to b3 and my opponent has now a way to win a pawn after pawn takes pawn takes the b4 pawn is unprotected but i think first of all i could take the pawn back by playing the move queen b3 and then take the f7 pawn but that's not the only thing i i achieve because the two prawn the two pawn the two prawns i was about to say the two pawns at the center of the board are really strong. Okay, now the idea of this move behind a possible like sac pawn sacrifice was to push my pawn even forward and to get rid of this knight protecting this pawn. But if I push immediately, there is knight a5 attacking my bishop. So I'm not too excited about that. Okay, I will play maybe bishop queen here. I'm attacking this pawn. And if bishop e6, what's the move I play? Five. And just to be clear, Queen b3 works just after b4, because if not, there would be this fork. And I am maybe losing even a piece. Uh, in the best case, I'm just giving away my bishop for the knight. Now, I just want a pawn here. We can pre-move it. Oh, they didn't take. That's all right. We'll just take here. We still have to develop this bishop and this rook. Okay, they take back, and now we can push this pawn with tempo, attacking the bishop one more time. The bishop has to move back. Okay, they take here, we take back. Usually, don't be the first one to trade because it's so much better when your opponent is doing so. Uh, I'm thinking about pushing there. But hey, let's prepare it. Let's go first with the knight controlling that square. And now we could push it for real because we are not sacrificing a pawn, but we are just trading and getting nice a nice advantage out of it. Um, okay, I'll go with the knight here. I don't want to be the first one to trade because I would activate the queen. Instead, if my opponent trades, I can take back with the knight and then I'm going to play the move e6. Why do I want to play the move e6? It's because this pawn is a little bit blocking this one because even if I go there, I'm not doing much. So I don't have an active square for this bishop and I really would love to push here so at least the bishop has a very nice square there. Okay, my opponent is attacking the knight but this comes with a problem for them because now those squares are a little bit weak i'll go back i don't trade anything I sh it would have been better to go here honestly i regret my decision to go 
this side because I'm blocking my own bishop. Oh, wow. They're really attacking us. Okay, I'll take their ones. I want to see how my opponent is taking back. They take with the pawn, so they don't want to trade the queens. And you know what I will do? I will play the move b5. What am I doing? I'm blocking all those pawns on the black squares. Uh, so it's the same color as this bishop. So this bishop is blocked by his own pawn. It's true that you could say the same about this pawn. It's blocking my own bishop. But it's okay. It's, um, it's a fair trade. Knight out there. I play this move because I absolutely need to bring the pieces out. I know that I'm offering a trade, but it seems all right to me. If the knight takes, I'm taking with the queen. There we go. What? Come on. No. <laughs> Why do they all blunder queens? Guys, if you subscribe, also your opponents will blunder their queen. Okay, new game, everybody. I read a comment, somebody saying, oh, you play uh, every day against somebody from India. Yes, there are lots of strong and good Indian players. It's time for Ash to play. Ooh, they play the Karakan. Okay, guys, I will show you the most aggressive way to play against the Karakan. You play the advanced variation. And after bishop here, you play the move h4. Here, there is already a very clear idea. You want to trap this bishop, so h6 is the move that you have to play. And now I will still play, take lots of space with the move g4. The bishop has to move. Ooh, and the bishop goes way, goes away. <laughs> the bishop goes back this way. I will play bishop here. The bishop is ready to join this diagonal. Basically, the whole idea of the Karakan is that you push. Okay, they are attacking here, I protect. So the idea is that you push c6 to push on d6 because in the first moves, sorry, I will show you, you want to bring the bishop out. So you first bring the bishop out and then you play the move e6. But now, guys, if my opponent is going to play e6 themselves, I don't think it was such a success. That's why here, after g4, usually you go on h7, you want to keep the, the bishop on this diagonal. Okay, in the current position, we need to defend this pawn one more time. So we play bishop e3, protecting it like this. Yes, no, the queen is really a little bit, they are really a little bit annoying, but I think I can just take there. But if I take, the pawn is ta the queen is taking here, my rook is under attack, and if I move this knight, this pawn might also fall. I'm not convinced. I will play a crazy move, e6. You might say, what? I mean, if the pawn takes, of course, I mean, I go with my bishop there. But the full point, the big point here, is that now this pawn is no longer hanging because after take 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 queen takes i gave a discovery check so i just need to deal with this pawn and i think i will just develop the knight here and after queen takes i go with the knight there i'm threatening this fork and also rook there Let, let's do it let's do it okay we take and they took there now. Okay, I go with the knight here, looking for this. Wow. Wow. They take here because if I take, this rook is hanging. But I think they blundered. Because they, I just played the move f3, and this bishop is under attack. If they take, I take with the knight. I mean, don't tell me that there is queen here. This could be crazy, but even if queen here... I can simply take queen takes and then I give a check, I take this rook. And this knight is protected my, by the bishop, so it should be good. <laughs> Such a crazy position. Okay, I play knight here because if I give a check, I take the rook. At the, at, at the point, my opponent has queen g2 and I'm losing my rook. I don't have a way to save it. So, let's try this. Okay, the rook goes away. I will play a4. I want to try to trap this queen. That's my goal. Knight there. So I play rook here, attacking the queen. Queen takes. I take here. Queen is still big danger. Wow, that's crazy. I'm taking here and we go to this end game. I'm a few pawns down, but my opponent is having material deficit. I'm in trouble, guys. I think I'm in trouble. I'm right now two pawns down. I'm taking back this pawn. Okay, just one pawn down. No, two pawns down still. Okay, we bring the king here and we try to bring the other rook to the attack. I give a check here. I want this king to move up. 
and then I will go with the other rook. The nice part is that this bishop cannot be moved because this rook would be hanging. This is a nice move. I'll play rook here. There is the idea to join with the other rook this square and then to attack this bishop. Oh, I mean, I'll play it anyway. Or maybe we play first this move. Then bishop out. I take and takes. This is so crazy. Okay, let's go here. Now they could go with the bishop out because this knight is hanging. Wow, they are playing really good moves. Okay, we take, take, and we'll take here. Wow, they even take with check there. They're just playing too well, guys. I can't do much here. Okay, now this is a bit too 5 add, honestly. <laughs> I mean, attacking there, not taking the knight. Okay, fine. We'll just move. Yeah. And we take here. Now this... Okay, knight here. I want to go... Uh, oh, wait. I did lose a piece. I think I just lost a piece. There is rook here. Yep. Ah, uh, that's very bad. Okay, I'll go here. Oh, okay, I'm taking. What was that move? H6? I don't understand. Okay, let's go with the bishop here. We save the peas. Now we have at least a draw. Mm. Okay, let's give a check here. And we go back. Let's see if they repeat the moves. No, they give a check. We go here. Checking this. Crazy. I have check and check. They go here, it's mate. Okay, guys, I think I'll take a draw here. I have 50 seconds and not much to do. Okay, let's go here. They can go there to change. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Oh no, guys, this. Ah, they, they are a new player, I think. Why are they losing 18 points? That's very strange. Maybe they are new to rapid because they played really well. Look at this. Bishop e7 is brilliant because you can sacrifice this rook because this bishop is is also is this knight is also hanging. And now this is the best move. And this is again okay. It's just an intriguing move. It's not the best move. Okay, but it's a fun move. So I went there and I took. So they were completely winning at this point, but here, I don't know why they didn't take there. This is definitely the best move. I don't know how I got out of that situation, but guys, I'm officially scared. Because if this is the level of an 1800, I mean, the, the, the path to 2000 is looking hard. Let's put it that way. But you know what? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 22. Bye!